Hi everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. The topic which I'm uh, covering today is about leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score. That's lab score. Now what is this leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score? This uh, score is often used in patients with an elevated WAC count to differentiate a reactive process from a chronic myelogenous leukemia where you know the scores will be low in CML that is chronic myelogenous leukemia and high or normal in reactive process. Now in the next 5 to 10 minutes we will just understand as to what exactly leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score is and how is it you know uh, different in these two entities. So the leukocyte alkaline phosphatase let's split this the alkaline phosphatase in the leukocyte is basically an enzyme which removes phosphate group in the molecule and that help in digestion of phagocytosed material in the neutrophils. So basically, this helps in the defense mechanism of these leukocytes, right? So, and one important thing we need to understand here is that this alkaline phosphatase is present in mature neutrophils or mature leukocytes, okay? They are not present in immature cells. So they are, and the activity is extremely high in these mature leukocytes or mature neutrophils. Now we all know what leukocytosis is, right? So anything more than 11,000 cells per cubic mm is called leukocytosis. It's basically an increase in leukocyte count. And all these leukocytes which are increased are mature leukocytes. Now let us understand this chronic myelogenous or chronic myeloid leukemia. We all know that this is a hematopoietic malignancy with abnormally high leukocyte count. Now it I mean, frequently more than 1 lakh cells per uh, you know, microliter. Usually, usually it will be around more than 25,000 per microliter. But what is important to note that in chronic myelogenous leukemia, though the leukocyte count is high, these leukocytes are abnormal leukocytes. Basically, they are immature, you know, leukocytes. Now, let us understand another entity called leukemoid reaction. So, this is a leukocyte count, the condition where there is leukocyte count greater than 50,000 cells per microliter. So, it mimics leukemia and that's why it's called leukemoid reaction. So, this is a reactive process. It's not a leukemia. It's a reactive process, but yet it mimics leukemia. And all the leukocytes here in leukemoid reaction are normal leukocytes. I mean, they are mature leukocytes. This reactive process is basically, an, you know, a, a defense mechanism. You know, whenever, whenever there is an infection to the body, it's trying to ward off the infection by mounting a response in the form of increased leukocyte count. Sometimes the increased leukocyte count is so much so that it mimics leukemia. And that's why it's called leukemoid reaction. It is not leukemia. Now, if the WBC count is more than 50,000 per microliter, now there are two possibilities. One, it could be a leukemoid reaction or it could be a chronic myelogenous leukemia where it is a hematopoietic malignancy. Now, it's always important to differentiate these two entities because the entire management changes when you, when you diagnose a case of chronic myelogenous leukemia. So, is it a leukemoid reaction or chronic myeloid leukemia? One of the simpler way to differentiate between leukemoid reaction or chronic myeloid leukemia is the assessment of leukocyte alkaline phosphatase activity. In other words, we are looking at finding this leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score. Now, how do we do that? Let's understand this. So, this is done by means of a cytochemical strain, which is done on a peripheral smear. Okay, so imagine you have a case of leukemoid reaction or uh, chronic myeloid leukemia, you don't know that. You make a peripheral smear of that particular patient and then do this particular stain. This is a cytochemical stain. The component of this stain, the, sub the substrates include naphthol AS phosphate and that will be in alkaline solution. And you have a dye in the form of fast blue BB salt or fast violet B salt. So the principle behind this particular uh, stain is the naphthol AS phosphate in the alkaline medium, what happens, you know, if the leukocytes contain the alkaline phosphatase, if it contains al alkaline phosphatase, this phosphate is cleared and then it is, and then the naphthol is released. So basically this naphthol AS phosphate will be hydrolyzed, releasing this naphthol and this naphthol binds with the dye to form an insoluble precipitate. Okay, that's a blue color precipitate you find this precipitate at the site of enzyme activity within these leukocytes. So this being the principle, 
we know that we have to stay in the peripheral smear and then we need to count 100 cells okay now look for the blue precipitate in these in the neutrophils and grading is done how is the how is the grading done for example if you don't see any precipitate that means absolutely no leukocyte alkaline phosphatase activity and then you give a grade as zero and if there is faint you no know, reaction faint precipitates then you call it as plus one if you have a moderate stain okay then you call it as plus two if the stain is quite strong more than this moderate activity then it call then you call it as strong stain and give a score of plus three and if you, you know, if the precipitate is so much that you don't see any nuclear, you know, the, the whole cytoplasm, the whole cell is studded with this precipitate, then you give a plus four. So basically plus four is a very strong stain without cytoplasmic background. Even the nuclear, nuclear details might not be able to visualize in this particular stain. Okay, so now you know how grading is done. For example, uh, we, we talked about counting 100 cells, right? So imagine if you, in these 100 cells, 25 cells do not show any activity. You give a zero score and around 25 cells has plus one score, around 30 cells has plus two and around 15 cells show plus three type of uh, staining and around five cells show around plus four type of staining. That's grade four. Now, how is the counting done? The counting in, is done basically, you just add this zero score in 25 cells. The total score is again zero. One score in 25 cells, 25. Two score in 30 cells, that adds to around 60. Three scores in 15 cells, 45. And likewise, it's 20. So the total leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score is adding all these things, you get 150. So 150 is a score for this particular scenario. Now, the normal range of leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score is 30 to 185. Now, having known the normal range, now let's come back to the question whether this is a case of leukemoid reaction or chronic myeloid leukemia. So what could be so what could be the score in these two? In leukemoid reaction, because all the cells are mature leukocytes you expect a very high score because you find lots and lots of neutrophils with very high activity, okay? So that means in leukemoid reaction, the LAP score will be high. In chronic myeloid leukemia, we are dealing with increased leukocyte count, which are abnormal leukocytes, which are immature leukocytes. So you expect alkaline phosphatase activity in these cells to be extremely low, right? So that is the reason count or the score per 100 cell will again be low. So chronic myeloid leukemia, the LAP score will be extremely low as compared to that of leukemia reaction, which will be high. So high, high score is not characteristic of only leukemia reaction. It can be seen in pregnancies, in polycythemia vera, in cases of multiple myeloma, in aplastic anemia and in obstructive jaundice. Similarly, Chronic myeloid leukemia is not the only entity which shows low LAP score. LAP score can be low in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. It can be low in sickle cell anemia and cases of hypophosphatemia. So that's all about LAP score. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries to ask. Don't forget to subscribe and do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.